Welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. Today we're discussing an enigmatic side character originally introduced in Liliana's song, Tug. Tug was a dwarf who kept his origins hidden from his companions. Liliana knew he was a spy, but was never sure who he worked for. He was unfortunately killed during Liliana's song, so he cannot confirm anything at this time. All we have are clues. Liliana's song is one of those unreliable narrator things, as she says she changes the tale based on who she tells it to. But in the world of Theta's Volume 2, with correspondence to Sketch, their mutual companion, she explains, uh, she explains some more about Tug. He was supposedly a castless dwarf, but you'll notice the alleged castless brand is not the castless brand. So if he is from Orzammar, it means he came to the surface before receiving the brand. Maybe it was as a baby, or maybe he was about to lose his cast for some reason and just fled. Engraved on his axe are two phrases he never spoke, but were clearly important to him. The first is, the stone lives beneath Orlay. This is also spoken by the Nexus Golem in Dragon Age 2, and I'll talk more about that phrase a little later and the Golem in another video. But in the world of Thetis, Liliana reveals there was another phrase, Mathasgar na fornin patat isatanal. It literally translates to, I'm sorry, sacrifice, one at my side, something. Isatanal. Apparently the dwarves Liliana asked said they didn't know the word. We hear this word in The Descent, written by the Shah Ritual. Isana means lyrium. Isatanal, we don't get a specific translation for, but it's followed by cut our tongues, entomb our bodies, watch over the titan. Sounds like it has something to do with duty or a pledge, maybe somehow related to lyrium. Like a religious concept maybe? Maybe it translates roughly to baptism? That is what the shopper tall do, but tug... There's a common theory I share that Tug is from Kalsharak. It's been separated from Orzammar for around a thousand years, but they are both well separated from the Shapertal culture. Kalsharak has some weird stuff going on with their people. One source says their gaze reminded him of a Grey Warden. Liliana doesn't mention anything like that from Tug. There is another phrase that is similar to what's on Tug's axe. Mathasgar na fornen pa salroka a trust. This dwarven phrase means, at my side, find your way in the dark. Like the first phrase, this is also spoken by the Nexus Golem. So Liliana thinks the phrase on Tug's axe could mean, I regret the sacrifice of my kin, but it means we will find our way home. This reminds Liliana of how Orzammar abandoned Kalsharak, and how Tug sacrificed himself to spare Sketch. Liliana is certain it isn't that simple though. But it is super interesting to me that Tug, a spy for whoever, laid down his own life for Sketch. Was that simply friendship? Or did he know something that would make him think Sketch's life was more important than his own? Who is Sketch? He'll get his own video. Let's go back to The Stone Lives Beneath Orlay. Liliana says I've heard this before, but more as a passing phrase than anything true. This is weird. It conjures the image of two dwarves passing each other and nodding, saying, The stone lives beneath Orlay. Or saying goodbye, one of them leaves, and the other waves, calling, The stone lives beneath Orlay. This does not sound like a passing phrase as Liliana describes it. No, I think... I think that's a secret code. Like the swan flies east at midnight. It's an identifier for spies working for the same cause but it's weird master spy Liliana doesn't come to that same conclusion. Maybe she knows something we don't, or maybe she does suspect something, but left it out of the letter intentionally, not sharing that suspicion. That seems odd considering everything else she shares, but maybe. Also, I have to point out this letter was stolen by someone on its way to sketch before being recovered by Charter. I really like how the thief was slain as he wrote this message and deliberately left an ellipsis, three dots, as he died. That is hilarious to me. Also, Sketch seems to have been sort of a loose ally to the Inquisition, as he shows up in a war table operation helping rebel mages make their way to Skyhold. 
That's worth noting. So where does this leave us with Tug? Well, basically nowhere. Just, he was a spy, and we don't know who he worked for. I'd say Cal Chirac is the most likely answer, but it's also possible he worked for the Shopper Tall people. It's possible they are one and the same, but I doubt it. Some less likely suspects are the executors, you know, the guys who execute the will of those across the sea with precise execution. I'm so freaking bitter about this. Uh, maybe Canari, probably not. Honestly, I'm losing track of all the spy organizations in Thetis. I'm going with Kalsha Rock. So, episodes I need to make. Nexus Golem, Kalsha Rock, Sketch, uh... Let me know what else you guys want to hear about. And if you want to help out with any research or theories, hop on over to Discord and let me know what you got. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and remember, execution is everything. I'm so bitter. <laughs>